screen sharing has been started okay so let me start from the initial only okay so that everybody can see that recording yes so hello everyone this is lecture 2 on computer networks and uh, we are going to start functionality of data link layer okay so data link layer uh, works from hop to hop okay so hop to hop delivery of packet is done by data link layer and at data link layer name of the packet is called frame okay so we will simply say hop to hop delivery of frames that is the responsibility of data link layer okay and i have mentioned in the previous class also and again i'm mentioning this is very very important point so you can make some stars over it what is the point data link layer hop to hop or not to node network layer is from host to host uh, and uh, transport layer is from process to process okay so from hop to hop like this from sender to this node from this node to this node this node to this node that is done by data link layer okay and then uh, network layer is responsible for host to host delivery like uh, from this sender to this receiver computer we want to deliver the packet for that we have network layer and transport layer is from process to process see uh, we have delivered the packet to uh, uh, receiver computer but till receiver computer is not sufficient we have to give the packet or we have to deliver the packet to the actual process which is communicating so that is done with the help of transport layer okay so transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery or you can call it as end to end so end to end which layer is working end to end transport layer which work which layer is working from host to host network layer which layer is working from hop to hop or node to node data link layer okay so you should remember all these points very very carefully okay okay so this is the basic functionality of data link layer and uh, now we will study the functions okay but functions the uh, data link layer is doing you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide done okay yeah so functions of data link layer functions so what are the functions first is framing first function is framing let me list the points and then i will uh, explain you then physical addressing okay and uh, then we have flow control then error control and then access control okay so first is framing framing means what data link layer is doing see uh, network layer packet name is datagram i have told you so this datagram will be given to data link layer what data link layer will do it will attach a header and it will attach a trailer to it and the resulting structure is known as frame so this framing is the first functionality which is done by data link layer so data link layer will attach header and trailer to the datagram which is received from the network layer okay and the resulting structure is known as frame okay so that, uh, let me write the point if you want me see these are these are theoretical points if you want me to write then i can write otherwise i will dictate the notes and you can note down very very fastly okay that is the much better idea so i i am dictating now please try to uh, write these points framing means data link layer will add header and trailer data link layer add header and trailer to the datagram add header and trailer to the datagram received from network layer datagram received from network layer resulting packet is called frame resulting packet is called frame okay so how framing is done and so on we will study that don't worry our main aim will be to study layer by layer okay i will i will teach you layer by layer first we will study layer then data link layer okay then network layer then transport layer and so on so layer by layer will so when we will jump to data link layer then i will tell you how exactly framing is done so i'm just giving you a point that is data link layer will add header and trailer to the datagram received here and resulting packet is called frame okay that is known as framing so framing is completed next is physical addressing 
so in the previous lecture if you try to remember i have told you that uh, every computer which is connected to internet has two addresses one is physical address and another is logical address physical address scope is uh, one network or one local area network or lan and uh, logical address scope is entire internet okay so that see what header contains you can ask me what header contains so header contain physical address so both sender as well as receiver okay so physical addressing means header contain physical address of both sender as well as receiver okay yeah so you can note down and i am writing that also because it is important point header of frame contain physical address of both sender and receiver so now there is a clause here or there is a you can say some condition here when when we will say header of frame contain physical address of both sender and receiver if both are in the same network if both are in same network otherwise it contain otherwise it contain uh physical address of uh, sender and some, uh, otherwise it contain physical address of intermediate nodes physical address of intermediate nodes intermediate nodes so what i want to say is that is very simple point sender this is a node this is a node and this is a receiver so if you try to remember my previous class i have told you so uh, what frame will contain so here this sender is not directly sending frame to here to receiver it is not sending it is sending frame to this intermediate node so at sender side physical address will be of sender and receiver physical address will be of this node say r1 now when r1 is forwarding the frame to this say r2 so sender physical address will be r1 and receiver physical address will be r2 now when r2 is delivering frame to receiver then sending physical address will be of this r2 and receiving physical address will be of this receiver so this is the as when well as receiver will be there in the frame okay so header of the frame can physical address of both sender and receiver if both are in same network if both are in same network no problem at all it will in physics of both sender and receiver but if uh, both are uh, but if both are in uh, different networks or otherwise i have written otherwise it contain physical address of intermediate nodes i hope you have got the point okay that was the basic idea of physical addressing next is flow control what is so if anybody is having any doubt please let me know otherwise i will start the next function functionality yes. ha ah, physical addressing again okay so physical addressing i think you uh, you remember from the previous class what was the physical address so its scope was local area network or lan so when computers are in same lan see this is a sender and this is a receiver both are in same lan so this is a rule that physical address uh, or you can say header of the frame will contain physical address of sender as well as receiver because they are in the same lan only so no need to worry but if this receiver if uh, in place of here it is say somewhere here if receiver is here and in between there are some intermediate nodes or they are connected by some intermediate nodes then this sender will send frame to where it send frame to this outer or this intermediate node now this intermediate node will send frame to this intermediate node and then this intermediate node will send frame to the receiver so clearly here when this is sending to this when this is sending to this so sending physical address will be this and receiver physical address will be this when this is sending to this sending physical address will be this receiver will be this and so on any doubt no sir okay yeah so physical addressing is over next is flow control so let me jump to the next slide you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay i'm jumping now so next is flow control so what is flow control 
फ्लो कंट्रोल मीन रिसीवर शुड नेवर बी ओवर फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज अंडर एंड दिस इज अ रिसीवर एंड सेंडर इज कीप ऑन सेंडिंग डेटा टू रिसीवर एंड फाइनली रिसीवर गेट ओवर वेम दैट मीन रिसीवर इज नॉट एबल टू प्रोसेस द डेटा फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम आई एम आई एम सेंडिंग वॉइस टू यू ओके सो आई एम सेंडिंग डेटा और आई एम द सेंडर एंड यू आर द रिसीवर विच यू आर कंज्यूमिंग दैट डेटा आई एम सेंडिंग द डेटा एंड यू आर कंज्यूमिंग द डेटा नाउ इफ माई स्पीड इज वेरी वेरी हाई देन ऑब्वियसली यू विल बी ओवर वेल ओवर वेल मीन्स यू आर नॉट एबल टू प्रोसेस द डेटा okay if my speed is very high you will be able to process that so what is the better idea i so what i am doing i am so i am sending data to you giving some acknowledgement thanking for your acknowledgement so when you say acknowledgement okay i have received or i have processed and i will send data and so on so that is basic meaning of flow control so flow control means amount of data which can be sent by sender before receiving an acknowledgement okay are you getting it please write the definition the words is not audible sir okay so just wait for a few just wait for few seconds no this can be heard sir this is fluent Okay, now now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, sir. Okay, so flow control means amount of data that can be sent from sender. Amount of data that can be sent from sender to receiver. Amount of data that can be sent from sender to receiver without receiving an acknowledgement. Without receiving an acknowledgement, that means how much amount of data sender can send to receiver before receiving acknowledgement. that is the basic meaning of flow control any doubt here yes sir okay so that is flow control next was next functionality was error control so let me give you the idea about what is error control okay so what is error control so error control means uh, see we have two strategies for error control one is error detection and another is error correction okay error detection and error correction error detection means receiver will simply detect some error that means it will simply say so there is some error and it will discard the packet what is error correction error correction means receiver will not only detect error it will also try to correct the error so what do you mean by error correction see we are sending binary data like this 10101101 and so on. this is binary data so error correction means you try to find the position where data where error is there if you are able to find the position say this is there is some error here so you will simply say okay you just convert it into zero that's it so this is all about error correction so error correction means finding position of error error detection means only yes or no there is some error or not that's it so error detection means uh, detect some error that means answer is yes or no that's it do we do not need to find position and so on error correction means you will have to find yes or no and if answer is yes you try to find the position where is the error okay and after you have find the position you will simply uh, you can say toggle the bit or uh, complement the bit after finding the position complement the bit complement the bit okay so uh, what do you think which is better technique error detection means you simply detect the error and if answer is yes simply discard the packet you simply discard the packet and sender will again send it okay so discard the packet and uh, and sender will again send it okay and uh, error correction means if there is some error then you will try to find the position and you complement the bit and finally you will get the data so i think most of you will say better approach is obviously error correction okay you are not unnecessarily burden the burdening the sender that please send again and so on but actually error detection is much better okay because it will give you a faster kind of thing faster delivery you will, you can expect for example if uh, receiver find that there is some error so he will not uh, put his head into the things that where is error and so on it will simply discard it and sender will again send it that is much much better option but error correction take lot and lot of time 
okay because you have to find the position where is the error for example if uh, uh, we have studied combinatorics now so i can give you some idea for example i uh, you are sending say 100 bits of data 100 bit is very very small amount actually we are sending in megabytes data so i am just assuming that we are sending only 100 byte of data and there are two errors or you can say two bit error so what are these two bits so they can be first two uh, one two two three three four one five and so on so how many combination 100 c2 100 c2 is 100 into 99 divided by 2 so it will be approximately what it will be uh, 5050 so 5050 combinations you have to check if only 100 bits you are setting uh, sending and only two bit error is there what about if we have five bits error it will be very very high amount okay so it's much better that uh, error detection is much better than error correction okay this question has been asked in gate that's why i'm repeating so what do you think which is more uh, more uh, you can say easy technique or more efficient technique error detection is more efficient than error correction because in error correction it will take hell lot of time to find where is error and so on better is retransmission okay so error detection is better than error correction ed is better than ec Okay. how error is detected how error is corrected don't worry we have to study few schemes also in gate exam we have uh, we we have this topic uh, error detection and error correction i will tell you don't worry about that when we will jump to data link layer i am just giving you introductory part here so when we will dig deep into data link layer i will tell you how error is detected and how error is corrected and so on don't worry about it okay so this is all about error uh, error uh, you can say detection and correction and the last is access control last functionality is access control take snapshot i will jump to the next slide and in that slide i will tell you about access control done okay. so next is access control access control means who can access the shared channel when okay so for example uh, this is the you can say uh, computers are connected like this in a bus topology a b c d so when b and c are communicating when b and c are communicating then a and d cannot communicate why because they have to access the shared channel because if they try to communicate then data will collide and so on that will create problem so access control means who can access the shared channel when who can access the shared channel when the shared channel when that is the basic meaning of access control and there are many protocols which we are going to study in our subsequent classes if you have heard about them aloha slotted aloha okay and many questions have been asked in gate from these topics also very very important topic access control is very very important okay csma csma cd and so on we will study them don't worry there are many techniques we will study them one by one okay so access control means who can access the shared channel when that is the basic meaning of access control okay and that is the responsibility of data link layer so now if you try to think properly so what exactly data link layer is doing you see this it is doing framing that means it is packetizing the data also then physical addressing that means it is uh, header is uh, containing physical address of sender as well as receiver and so on flow control it is doing error control it is doing access control it is doing so it is doing all the issues which are related to node to node delivery and that's why data link layer is very very important and once we complete the data link layer you can imagine that almost 60 percent networking is over okay so data link layer is very very important layer and uh, many questions have been asked in gate from this layer so most important layer is data link layer most important layer in networking is data link layer because it handles all the issues all the issues related to 
node to node delivery node to node delivery it will handle all the issues related to node to node delivery whatever problem you you may think that this may occur and so on it will be definitely handled by data link layer so it is the most important layer and uh, many gate questions have been asked from this layer there are many protocols like you have heard about sliding window protocol okay go back and selective repeat there are many protocols okay and we will study all of them one by one don't worry about it okay and most important layer and when this layer is completed you can imagine more than 50 percent computer networks is over okay take snapshot we will jump to the next slide Answer. okay so now we are going to start network layer so next layer is network layer so i'm just giving you introduction here okay function of layer and so on they can ask they can ask which layer is uh, doing access control which layer is doing error control which layer is doing flow control and so on which layer is doing framing so they will ask direct questions okay network layer so what was the responsibility of network layer host to host delivery of packets host to host delivery of packets and here packets are called datagrams host to host delivery of packets called datagrams okay so that is the basic functionality of network layer so now we are going to study the functions okay what are the functions which are performed by network layer so very first function is logical addressing very first function is logical addressing uh, i will write and then i will explain next is routing next function is quality of service qos quality of service and the next is congestion control and the last is uh, fragmentation this has been asked in gate fragmentation is done by which layer so you will directly say network layer that is the beauty of this subject uh, con computer networks is really very simple subject and one line question only okay if you know you will take it if you do not know you will leave it that is the basic rule of a computer network so many things you have to remember and uh, there are some numericals also don't worry we will study those numericals also but one one step or two step maximum so you simply apply the formula get the answer you know the formula you will be able to answer that question if you do not remember the formula you you might not be able to answer that question it is just like that only okay so put the formula uh, and find the answer that is the basic rule of computer networks so you have to remember many things in this subject that is the you can say beauty or you can say advantage or some of you might think that this is a disadvantage of the subject it is not that much conceptual okay so there are not many concepts which you should know so you have to remember things if you are able to remember you will be able to answer the question that's it okay so uh, function so first uh, first is logical addressing logical addressing means i think you have got it header of network layer will contain logical address of sender as well as receiver header of network layer each layer is adding header now i think you already know i have told you in the previous lecture so header of network layer contain logical address la of la is nothing but your ip address okay la of sender and receiver so now it is end to end so now do not say intermediate nodes and all it will simply contain uh, logical address of sender as well as receiver it hardly matters they are in the same network or they may be in a different network it hardly matters to me okay s and r may and may not be in same network may or may not be in same network Okay, yeah. So this is next is routing. So routing means let me jump to the next slide. It will be it will become messy. Take snapshot. Okay. So routing means see this. We have a sender here. We have some intermediate nodes, and here we have receiver. 
So now this intermediate node, let us call it as router. So there are many intermediate nodes. I will tell you about these nodes uh, once we will dig deep into the subject, like uh, passive hub, active hub. Okay, then repeater, uh, then layer two switch, layer three switch. Okay, router, gateways. There are many uh, many nodes. So we will uh, when we will dig deep into the subject, I will get you. I will let you know all these things. Okay, bridge is there, and so on. Many things are there. Many questions have been asked in gate. Which layer, which device work at which layer? That's why I am telling you again and again. We, you have to remember multiple things. Like bridge works at data link layer, router works at network layer. Okay, and uh, gateway works at application layer. Like this, many questions have been asked. So when I will dig deep into these nodes, then I will tell you. Okay, and direct questions. Direct uh, router work at which layer? They will directly ask question. Okay, that is the beauty. Okay, so now see this. So sender uh, and uh, this is a router number one. This is router number two, router number three, and this is the receiver. So router number one. So since this is a sender and this is the receiver, so now sender has uh, sent this packet to this router. Obviously, uh, a packet cannot fly and go to the receiver directly. So first, it will go to receiver uh, router one, and more precisely, what exactly is going here? I think you have got it. Frame is going here. Because data link layer functionality is node to node delivery, so frame will go from sender to this uh, router one. Now this router one, uh, what it will be doing? So it will unpack and uh, see the. I think you remember my previous class. It will first unpack and check. Okay, my it's my physical address. So let me receive the packet and then again header and trailer will be removed. Header and trailer will be removed, and datagram will be given to the network layer. And at network layer, it will check. Okay, it's not my IP address, so let me pack the packet and send it again. Okay, so now question arises: This router one is having these three ports, or rather four ports. It is having four ports. So where it will forward, and how it will come to know that it has to forward here only? Like if receiver is here, then obviously it has to send the packet here, na? it cannot send packet here obviously it has to send here only so how router will come to know about this so this exactly we will study in routing okay so actually each router has routing table and from this routing table it will be able to decide where the packet will be forwarded and all so routing basically means to route the packet to find the destination okay routing means to route packet to final destination okay that is the basic meaning of routing or you can say to place the packet in route to destination no and so on you can think like that only okay so routing means to route the packet to final destination okay so this is routing i hope everybody have got it so what i'm trying to tell you any doubt here no sir okay so this is all about routing next is uh, next functionality is quality of service so you can take snapshot i will jump to the next slide and tell you about quality of service and don't worry routing is very very important topic okay we we, we uh, this is just introductory class okay so uh, i think you have heard about it or uh, if you have do not heard don't worry we will tell you distance vector routing link state routing these are the two main routing algorithms and many questions have been asked in gate from this topic mostly numericals will come numericals on uh, distance vector routing link state routing so in routing topic itself we will study these two okay so we will come back to it don't worry what is routing and all again we will come back to it i am just giving you small introduction here so i am just building the background i have told you in the previous lecture also i am just uh, making a face here so slowly i will put eye slowly i will put nose slowly i will put mouth and all and finally you will get the idea that okay we have converted uh, we have, we have got some idea or we have built a proper picture slowly we will build it don't worry so take snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay so next is quality of service qos quality of service so quality of service means see, first of all you should know quality is a subjective term quality is subjective term subjective means every person has a different perspective for example you buy a chocolate and for you you will say quality is very good because your parameters might be dry fruits and all if it is having dry fruits then according to you quality is very good but according to me it is very bad why because it is very sweet it is it is having very very large quantity of sugar which i do not like so for you quality is good for me quality is bad so everybody has a certain parameters so obviously quality is subjective term 
okay so since it is a sub sub subjective term so we should have some parameters to decide quality of service that how i can say that i am getting a good quality of service or how i, I can say i am getting bad quality of service and so on so what are those parameters so let me tell you that quality subjective term so uh, uh, it it is uh, uh, you can say measured by four parameters by four parameters what are those parameters so the first parameter is reliability reliability next parameter is uh, delay next is jitter and next is bandwidth reliability obviously you want that uh, uh, reliability should be high delay delay should be low okay bandwidth bandwidth should be high so roughly you know bandwidth means uh, bit rate na like 100 mbps 10 mbps and so on don't worry i will tell you what exactly do you mean by bandwidth and all in the later classes so roughly you can say like uh, we want obviously high bandwidth when can you say quality of service is good you you uh, you are expecting 10 mbps and i am giving you 100 mbps so you will say okay it's a very good but if you are expecting 100 mbps and i am giving you 10 mbps then you will say okay quality is bad like that okay jitter jitter is a new term jitter should be low what is what do you mean by jitter jitter means say for example your first packet arrive at uh, say uh, say 1 pm roughly i am giving you idea 1 pm second packet arrive at 1 1.01 1 .01 pm that means uh, uh, one hour and one second okay or you can say one hour one minute like this now next packet arrive at uh, after four minute delay uh, first packet arrive at 1 pm second packet after one minute then third packet is coming after four minute next packet is coming after say again say two minutes okay and next packet is coming say after uh, nine minutes like this so there is an uneven delay in receiving the packet that is known as jitter so jitter should be low are you getting it there should be no uneven delay there should be a proper even delay like for example if you are watching a video or you are watching some movie and uh, there is an uneven delay then you will find buffering buffering and so on okay that will create problem for you na? and you you uh, you will lose the interest in the movie and so on so that is not good idea so jitter means uh, delay uh, uneven delay in arriving of packets okay or if you want a technical definition then i can say variation in timing of receiving packet variation in timing of receiving packet and it should be obviously low jitter should be low it can, it should not be high if it is high then obviously quality will be bad so i hope i have made the point clear to everybody so uh, in gate syllabus we will study this bandwidth delay reliability jitter is not in syllabus so don't unnecessarily dig deep into this topic and all okay so our main concentration will be on reliability how you measure reliability and all then delay okay so how you will find the delay and all numericals have been come on this topic bandwidth bandwidth is also very important term jitter is not so important for gate take snapshot i will jump to the next slide done okay so next is option control congestion control what is congestion see uh, in a road and uh, there is some traffic jam and all so like uh, there are multiple cars standing and so on you will say the road is congested and so on so exactly what congestion means so uh, like we can think that road on road at a time we can have say 5000 vehicles or 5000 cars but when we have office time and all there are 50000 cars so obviously there will be congestion okay so congestion control means we will try to avoid as much as possible that we, we should try to avoid the congestion so in computer networks how you will define the congestion congestion means see uh, this is a network so there is a limit on number of packets which can be handled by this network at a time there is a limit okay and uh, how you how you will find that limit it is 
almost next to impossible because there will be multiple routers each router will have a queue of packets okay and uh, more is the uh, queue you will say more is the congestion and so on and anyway uh, when i will dig deep into the topic i will uh, give you the idea okay congestion control we will study tcp congestion control tcp congestion control is in our gate syllabus and it is very very important and many times question have been asked on this topic so when i will start tcp congestion control and it will be studied in your transport layer so when i will start transport layer i will give you idea about it so roughly you can think that if number of packets present in the network is greater so there is a limit network in the road 50000 cars are there then there is a congestion so like that only i will say there is a limit on number of packets uh, which uh, network can handle if that limit uh, if uh, number of packets is more then obviously there is a congestion okay so if number of packets present in the is greater than the number of packets it can handle then we will say congestion has occurred okay roughly you can think like that so if number of packets present in the network present in the network are more than the number of packets which it can handle which it can handle okay uh, then we then we say congestion has occurred then we say congestion has occurred. roughly i have written okay so if number of packets present in the network is more than the number of packets it, which it can handle then we will say congestion has occurred okay so like uh, it can handle packets but 50000 packets are there in the network then obviously we will say congestion has occurred okay yeah so how how these packets are coming obviously computers are there in the network so these computers are keep on sending packets in the network itself they are keep on pumping the packet in the network so obviously there might be a case of congestion okay you can take snapshot i will jump to the next slide yeah so done yes, okay please be active please be active so we have to cover lots of topic in today's class because yes, networking is yeah please come again uh, periodically your voice is breaking sir okay periodically my actually i think there is some issue from my side or something in in this website but uh, i really I don't know what has they are uh, typing messages even okay let let me check the messages first same thing yeah voice is breaking okay hmm so Not is it okay now like, especially like when you are giving the definition it just breaks hmm. <laughs> okay okay so please let me know at that moment only i will i will repeat it no problem okay the moment you you find that my voice is breaking i will stop for 10 5 to 10 seconds and then i will repeat the thing okay okay yeah so uh, next is fragmentation so i think and yeah next functionality yeah fragmentation so fragmentation you might not be able to get uh, here itself but let me give you a small hint see there is a network there is a network so each network has some uh, size of packet which it can handle that is known as mtu or maximum transmittable unit maximum transmittable unit means maximum some and here mtu is 250 so now the moment this router forward the packet of 500 mtu obviously this network cannot handle so it's better that this router divide this packet into two fragments or you can say more precisely datagram so datagram is fragmented that means it will this router will divide the datagram into two or more fragments so that it can be comfortably trans transmitted from this network to some other network and so on okay are you getting it so there is a Uh, um, uh, there is a limit yeah any doubt 
मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ योर यू कैन से मैक्सिमम साइज ऑफ पैकेट विच कैन बी हैंडल्ड बाई दिस नेटवर्क सो दिस नेटवर्क कैन हैंडल ओनली फाइव हंड्रेड बाइट ऑफ पैकेट इट कैन नॉट हैंडल मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड बाइट पैकेट Why? Because there are multiple issues. We will we will come back to it when we will dig deep into the subject. The basic thing is that you sh- you simply remember that five hundred byte packet it can handle. It cannot handle more than five hundred byte packet. Okay. So now it has uh, so five hundred by- byte packet come to this router, or you can say this node. And now this node is transferring this packet to some network where MTU is two fifty. so that means this network can handle only packet of size 250 bytes okay so now obviously uh, this router will not forward this 500 pack, uh, byte packet to this network because this network will discard the packet it cannot handle that packet so what is the better idea this router will divide or will fragment this datagram of 500 byte into two fragments of 250 bytes each okay so that is known as fragmentation fragment means pieces fragments i think you already know this is an english term fragment means pieces okay so it will divide uh, the datagram into multiple fragments so that these fragments can be handled by this network comfortably is it okay yes sir okay so fragmentation means divide the datagram why i am using the word datagram please say with me datagram means packet at network so this all is done by network layer because we are studying what functionality of network self okay so net it's the responsibility of network layer okay so what network layer will do network layer will divide the datagram into multiple pieces or small pieces called fragments okay so network layer divide datagram into pieces into small pieces we yeah, are into small parts called fragments into small parts called fragments yes any doubt here no sir clear sir okay yeah take snapshot i will jump to the next slide copy sir okay so network layer functionality is over now we are going to start transport layer so the moment you find that my voice is breaking please let me know i will immediately stop okay transport layer so what transport layer is doing it is responsible for end to end delivery of entire message end to end delivery of entire message okay or you you can say process to process delivery process to process delivery i have told you many times that uh, uh, delivery till end computer is not sufficient we have to deliver the packet to the actual process which is communicating see these computers are not communicating this is rough idea actually processes present in that computer is communicating so this computer to this computer which is responsible network layer so now this process to process which is responsible transport layer okay so we need transport layer so that we can deliver packet to the actual process. okay that is done by transport layer that is process to process delivery so let me give you uh, the list of the functions which it is performing functions so the very first one is service point addressing service point addressing next is segmentation and reassembly segmentation and reassembly
नेक्स्ट इज कंजेशन कंट्रोल ओके नेक्स्ट इज फ्लो कंट्रोल एंड द लास्ट इज एरर कंट्रोल so these are the five functions which are done by transport layer so i think you already remember congestion control i have told you this function in network layer but this is done by transport layer also and in fact in gate exam i have told you tcp congestion control is there and tcp congestion control is at transport layer only so in gate exam uh, we do not need to study a congestion control at network layer okay so congestion control is done by two layers network as well as transport layer let let me write these points these are very very important points and they might confuse you after few few classes you might get confused so better is i should write them so congestion control is done at two layers network layer and transport layer and both have their separate ways to handle the congestion network layer congestion control is not in gate syllabus so no need to worry about them what uh, these congestion control what these techniques are and so on transport layer congestion control there are many techniques but for gate we will study only one technique that is tcp congestion control tcp congestion control okay that is in your gate syllabus and almost every year you will find one question from this topic this is very very important okay yeah and flow control and error control again i think you remember i have just told you they are done at data link layer also so flow control and error control is done at data link layer also and transport layer also so let me write these points also they will confuse you fc and ec it is done at data link layer also and it is done at transport layer also so at data link layer what flow and error control means Uh, obviously it will it will be done for node to node or you may say hop to hop and transport layer flow and error control is for end to end or you can say process to process are you getting it so flow and error control at transport layer is end to end or process to process but data link layer flow and error control is for node to node or hop to hop is it okay yes sir okay so, so, so now congestion control at network layer gate mein nahi hai nahi hai theek hai theek hai only transport layer mein hai aur transport layer mein sirf tcp congestion control hai aur do techniques hum log aur dekh lenge ek hoga leaky bucket aur ek hoga token bucket leaky bucket and token bucket okay so these two we will study okay this is traffic shaping and all i don't worry i will tell you uh, when we will study congestion control i will tell you about all these things okay so network layer there are many techniques and uh, if you have interest you can uh, see for ozone book there are many congestion control techniques given but they are not for gate that's why we will not dig deep into these topics unnecessarily it will simply waste our time uh, and uh, by the way this subject is very huge so if we will try to study additional topics that will uh, obviously create problem in our mind because we have to revise and we have to do the things and all that will create problem for us so better is we will study only selective topics which are very very important okay and and see uh, actually rule of every competitive exam is so 20% or you can say 30% syllabus from 30% syllabus you can expect 80% paper so syllabus is obviously 100% from this 100% syllabus only 30% syllabus is very very important and from that 80% questions will be asked so from the rest 70% uh, syllabus only 20% question will be asked so better is leave that so concentrate on very very or most important topics only okay because most of the paper will be from these topics only okay so this is the basic rule of every competitive exam it is not regarding it every competitive exam is working like that only so very small portion of the syllabus very large amount of questions have been asked okay yeah and there are some topics from which gate has never asked questions so better leave them okay why why dig deep into those topics and why to waste the time and all 
okay so functions we have done three functions so service point addressing and segmentation and reassembly only two are left so service point addressing service point addressing let me jump to the next slide take snapshot done yes sir okay service point addressing so a uh, service point addressing means same uh, like in uh, in uh, logical addressing logical addressing in network layer what was that uh, header of the network layer will contain logical addressing was what header of network layer contain logical address of sender as well as receiver uh, and uh, in uh, uh, in uh, data link layer i have told you framing framing means header of the uh, sorry physical addressing physical addressing was the uh, fun uh, you can say heading of the function physical addressing means head of the data link layer will contain physical address of sender as well as receiver if both are in same network otherwise it will contain physical address of intermediate nodes so physical addressing at uh, data link layer next at network layer we have done logical addressing now at transport layer at transport layer we are saying service point addressing are you getting it try to establish link between these things the more you establish the link the more is uh, more easily you will get the things and uh, uh, you you might not be able to buy hard, uh, you might not need to buy hard all the things okay so better is try to uh, link the things okay so what is service point addressing so header of transport layer header of transport layer contain port address port address of sender and receiver process so i have told you in the previous class also this is a say a, say some computer or some machine a and there are multiple processes which are running on this machine now each process will have a unique port address okay so how uh, how operating system since we have multitasking operating system so in computer a we have installed a multitasking operating system like windows unix and all so there are multiple processes which are running on this computer a so how operating system will recognize the processes uniquely for that we have port addresses okay so each and every process will have a port address now that port address will be unique for in within this machine a okay so and and say for example here we have port address 12 okay or you can say 12000 roughly i am giving anything okay so we have a computer b and here also multiple processes are running so here also we can have a process which is having port address 12000 no problem in that okay of course sometimes they are unique sometimes they can be duplicated we will study that when we will dig deep into the transport layer okay in transport layer the first topic itself will be port addresses so there i will give you idea there is some range like 0 to 1023 like uh, from uh, roughly you can say uh, 1024 2 power 10 type okay so let me give a small idea 0 to 1023 okay they are uh, uh, they will be given to the processes like servers and all okay they will be unique okay but uh, uh, receiver side or you can say client client will have ephemeral port number ephemeral means temporary port number so they might they, they might be reused like this so this is having 12000 this is also having 12000 and so on so it can be repeated also so don't worry so they can ask in gate exam they can ask that port addresses can be repeated or not 100% they can be repeated no problem in that port addresses can be repeated can be repeated no problem okay yeah so when we will dig deep into the topic you will get more clarity okay the more i will say the more you will get confusions in your mind so better is we will simply stop here itself when i will dig deep into uh, uh, when i will start transport layer the first topic will be port address in that i will explain you all the things so head of the transport layer will contain port address of both sender as well as receiver process that is the basic thing which you should remember and what is the port address port address is given to uh, uh, address which is given to each and every process that is the port address okay and it can be repeated also no need to worry about it it can be repeated is it okay yes sir. yes any doubt yes sir. okay 
Okay, so let me jump to the next slide. This is all about service point addressing. And don't worry, if you are not able to understand, we when we will jump to this topic, you will get more clarity. I will give you proper range and proper things I will explain you because uh, this stage is very, very early. And I have told you many times that uh, do not try to understand each and everything in single class only. This is very, very huge topic. Okay, computer networks is very huge topic. So if I try to explain each and everything in single class only, everything will be messy. So better is we, we will stop here itself. Okay, so next is segmentation and reassembly. Yeah, next is segmentation and reassembly. So you have to remember a few points. Segmentation and reassembly. So I have given you idea about fragmentation. So fragmentation, this question has been asking it many times. Fragmentation is done at network layer. But segmentation, segmentation is done at transport layer. What is segmentation? See, uh, forget about other layers. I will roughly say uh, that application layer. Okay, you, you can think that about transport layer was session layer. Na? So forget about that. Roughly, I will say application layer. I will give you a reason of that also that why I am ignoring this, uh, this uh, session layer and, uh, and presentation layer and all. Why I am ignoring that? I will give you the reason after a few slides only. So forget about session and presentation. I will simply say application layer. So application layer will send huge amount of message. Application layer, what it is doing? It is creating the message. No? Creating the message. So this message is very huge. Okay, so at transport layer, this way, uh, chopping will be done like this. Okay, so and uh, this small size message to the small size package, uh, uh, small size message header will be attached. Okay, this small size message you will take and header will be attached called uh, transport layer header, and this resulting structure we will call it as segment. That's why we are calling it as segmentation. I have told you na packet or at transport layer is known as segment. So this is segment. So this is small data and this is the header uh, header transport. Okay, and so on. So again, to this we will uh, uh, transport layer will att attach header and it will make a segment. Here also segment. Here also segment and so on. This is known as segmentation. And what do you mean by reassembly? So segmentation is the net center side reassembly. Reassembly will be done at obviously receiver side because this entire message should be remake. Na? This entire message should be remake and it should be given to the application layer. So transport layer will keep on receiving the segments. Receiver transport layer will keep on receiving the segments. I think you remember in the previous lecture I have told you transport layer of sender will communicate with transport layer of the uh, receiver. Layer X on one machine communicate with layer X on another machine. Try to remember I have told you in the previous lecture. So it's not like that transport layer of sender is communicating with network layer of receiver. No. Layer X on one machine communicate with layer X on another machine and between uh, two machines actually I am saying roughly processes uh, sorry I am roughly saying layers but actually processes are communicating and these processes were known as peer to peer processes try to remember the things which I have told you in the previous lecture okay so layer X on one machine communicate with layer X on another machine so that is the thing so transport layer at sender side is communicating with transport layer at receiver side so sender side transport layer is sending segments to the receiver side transport layer and at receiver side they will be reassembled so how reassembly will be done obviously each segment will be having a unique segment number like segment 1 segment 2 segment 3 and so on roughly i'm telling you uh, in when we will dig deep into the topic i will tell you what what exactly do you mean by segment number and so on don't worry about it okay so actually segment number is not there but i have just introduced the term for you so uh, so that you get a small hint what exactly we are doing and all actually we have a sequence number field don't worry we will tell you all these things when we will dig deep into the transport layer topic okay yeah so segmentation is done at sender side and receiver side reassembly is done receiver side reassembly is done and how reassembly is done each segment has segment number each segment has segment number from that segment number receiver will come to know okay this is first segment this is second segment this is third segment and so on it will combine them and it will do reassembly so i hope you have got the point okay 
take the snapshot so this is all about your uh, uh, you can say functionality of your uh, uh, transport layer okay and and one more uh, functionality is there let me give you that also you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide thanks sir and let me add here also uh, connection control okay, one more functionality is there connection control that is the sixth functionality let me jump to the slide and tell you about what is connection control so connection control means the transport layer can be connection oriented as well as connection less so it entirely depends on what protocol we are using connection control means transport layer can be connection oriented connection oriented or it might be connection less okay so transport layer can be connection oriented also and it might be connection less also okay so what do you mean by i will say So why is breaking? In advance. Okay, I will wait for ten seconds. Yeah. Now, now is it okay? Answer. Yes, That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So connection oriented means allocation of resources in advance. allocation of resources in advance resources means memory and so on memory or you can say buffer okay connectionless means no uh, resources are not allocated in advance so here connection oriented basically means uh, you can say uh, allocation of resources in advance or mind makeup you are making your mind that something is coming and all that is mind makeup okay like for example you, you call somebody so the, a, a, you, a sense of connection has been established between the two parties because now it has been established it hardly matters they are speaking or not but your mind is uh, now since i have called uh, somebody so he will speak or you will speak and so on and uh, allocation of resources has been done like your mind is now totally focused on the other party that what he or she is speaking and all that is the basic meaning here roughly you can think like that okay and connectionless means allocation of resources are not done like you do chatting or whatsapp so you you simply uh, send some uh, message to somebody and you forget about it whether uh, he or she will reply after one hour two hour whenever he according to his or her ease he will reply you but if you call somebody then your expectation is very high that uh, you will immediately want response and all okay so that is connection oriented and that is connectionless so it provide both the services okay so transport layer provide both the services connection oriented and connectionless and do not consider connection oriented means a physical connection has been established like for example uh, you you cannot think like that uh, 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 like this is a sender and this is a receiver so physical connection means like uh, you cannot consider that a, a, a dedicated wire has been uh, uh, established or a dedicated wire has been given to sender and receiver and e and all the packets are going through that wire and all you cannot think like that this connection is not physical okay it is a logical connection connection is not physical it is rather it is logical connection rather it is logical connection like you are calling somebody it is a logical connection it is not a physical connection okay you cannot touch or you cannot feel that person it's just like you are logically connected with that person okay so connection is not physical rather it is a logical connection connection oriented means like that okay and in connection oriented scheme since uh, allocation of resources has been done and all so chopping can be done like big message you can send and you can uh, make small set
okay the voice breaking sir that amount of data okay so i will write then i will speak send only that amount of data which can fit in packet now i think uh, it's okay so my voice is clear now yes sir okay so uh, what connectionless means connectionless means send only that amount of data which can fit in packet that is connectionless so there is uh, so you you are sending only one message to some person and uh, you forget about it na so you are sending only that amount of data which you can type and all okay after typing after sending you simply forget so that is here only so send only that amount of data which can fit in the packet that is connectionless and connection oriented chopping can be done so connection oriented uh, a very big message you want to send you will chop it and make some small small segments and you will send them okay so chopping can be done but in connectionless no chopping you can send only that amount of data which can fit in packet okay so if you want me to write i will write it connection oriented uh, chopping chopping can be done but in connectionless no chopping no chopping okay you can send only that amount of data which can fit in packet for example you are playing a video game on uh, online video game so you are just press an arrow and you might think that car should move to the left and when you hit the right arrow key car should move to the right and so on so like that you are sending only very very small amount of data so why you are using connection oriented scheme you might use connectionless scheme in that case okay so connection oriented scheme is used when you want to transfer a very large file like 1 mb file 10 mb file or say 100 mb video you want to send and all in that scenario you will use connection oriented scheme okay so when chopping is done connection oriented is better when no chopping is needed then connection less is better so i hope you have got the point yes done yes sir okay so my voice is clear na answer okay so now uh, we will start uh, after transport layer uh, next is session layer so let me jump to the next slide so session layer functionalities is not so important for gate but just for the sake of formality i am telling you session layer so only one or two times question i been asked so session layer what is session layer session layer is known as network dialog controller network dialog controller this has been asked so which layer is known as network dialog controller that is a session layer okay so what are the functionalities or what are, what are the functions so first function is this only network dialog controller uh, next is synchronization of data synchronization of data and the next is token management token management okay so these are the three main functionalities and we will not dig deep into these topics because it is not so much important for git network dialog controller means it will establish maintain and synchronize and terminate the interaction between sender and receiver for example uh, if you have used internet banking and all you you uh, you got a message na like the, your session has been expired and all that you can think like uh, done by session layer so what session layer is doing so it is used to establish let me write the points i have i think i have told you in a very fast manner so let me uh, write those points so it it will establish establish maintain synchronize synchronize and terminate the interaction between sender and receiver interaction between sender and receiver so it will try to establish maintain synchronize and terminate the interaction between sender and receiver so uh, it will try to establish the session then it will maintain the session it will synchronize the session synchronize means for example you are not sending some data and uh, uh, in internet banking uh, you have left uh, open 
you, you have left a website open for say one or two minutes immediately when you try to do something and it will say session has been expired please try to log in again Okay, for security reasons, they do these things. So that is synchronization and then terminate the connection. I think you have got it. So network controller session layer means it will establish, maintain, synchronize and terminate the interaction between sender and Okay, next is synchronization of data. Synchronization of data means, for example, you are say very large amount of data, say 200 pages you are sending. So if some error and uh, uh, you, you might face that uh, you have to send all the 200 pages again because you do not know where was error and all so better is so after every 10 pages session layer will send some synchronization bits so they will guarantee that these 10 pages have been received fit and fine so if some error come then obviously you have to repeat only those 10 pages you you need not repeat all the 200 pages again and again that is the basic meaning of synchronization of data so if you want to send 200 pages send 10 pages and then some synchronization bits and then 10 pages then synchronization bits and so on so roughly you might think that you are sending data at a chunk of 10 10 pages each so when some error come you will be able to get to know okay so these 10 pages should be repeated no need to repeat the entire data that is the basic meaning of synchronization of data is it okay awesome okay next is token management so token management means uh, token are nothing but your cookies so you might see us so accept cookies and all so what are cookies and all so cookies or you can call it as token okay cookies or token they are generated at server side cookies or token they are generated at server side they are generated at server side and stored at client side stored at if you do shopping on so okay okay wait for 10 seconds yeah now now is it okay let me check the signal first now okay yes sir okay so uh, what are cookies cookies or tokens these are generated at the server side and stored at client side so for example you are doing some shopping on amazon and you want to purchase say shoes so you are seeing shoes and all and you close that uh, close the amazon app and after two three days when you again log in you will see shoes only okay so how these shoes come to you again so that is done with the help of cookies so now do not think that server is maintaining your uh, information and all if server uh, maintain your information then at a time there are lakhs or crores of users which are using amazon at a time so how server will maintain information of all these uh, users it cannot maintain so what it will do it will create a small text file and it will send that file to you okay or at client side so server now uh, server is tension free server need not maintain your information now next time when you log in you will show that cookie to the server you are not showing it it, it uh, these things are done automatically so you will show that cookie to the server and server will come to know okay you were seeing the shoes so now i will i will show you the shoes only are you getting it so this is done with the help of cookies or tokens so this question i've been asking gate cookies are what these are not piece of code they are text file only so this text file will contain some text small text only that will be read by your server and server will show you the things which you want to uh, see and all are you getting it so server is not maintaining the information because if server maintain the information there are lots and lots of users which are uh, currently logged in and accessing some data and all okay so uh, so you will say accept cookies so accept cookies means so server will send cook or text file to your computer okay and why it is not piece of code because if it was piece of code then obviously virus will come into your computer and everything will be gone 
okay so that's why piece of uh, uh, you can say a piece of code is not given simple text file is given is it okay yes yes sir okay why voice is okay na voice is clear sir so cookies or tokens are the text files which are sent by server to the client side okay so so that when client login again then server will show the uh, uh, your uh, interested content to you that is the basic meaning anyway we will uh, when we will study tell you is important so why all the functionalities of session layer actually it is done by okay mm, so what should be done now let me check let me check one another thing
Yeah, I am audible. Okay, but my screen sharing is not working. I think so. Screen is visible. No, sir. No, sir. It's buffering. Ah. Sir, freeze. Why, sir? Screen. Ah, freeze. Mm -hmm. Just a second. I don't know today why internet is doing so much problem. Sometimes it happens. Let me join again. Yes, I am audible now. Yes, sir. Okay. So I think uh, screen sharing has been started. Yeah. So, hmm. screen is visible now. Yes, sir. Okay. So till what point you have listened? So session layer, I have given you idea what is cookies and token and all. Yes, sir. Is it uh, yeah so now let me start the next layer okay so the next layer is presentation layer presentation layer so what presentation layer is responsible for only one line you should remember presentation layer is responsible for syntax and semantics of information syntax and semantics of information exchanged between sender and receiver exchange between sender and receiver okay. syntax means i think every programming language has syntax so we, you should remember like in c language we have semicolon and so on i think you already know what is syntax and all okay. semantic means meaning okay semantics mean meaning so syntax and semantics of information exchange between sender and receiver this is the responsibility of presentation layer so what are the functions so first function is translation 
okay so translation mean i think i have told you na when uh, one system is using windows and another system is using unix so we, uh, no file of windows will run in unix and no file of unix will run in windows so how they will interact and all so for that trans presentation is used i think in the previous lecture i have told you osi model open system interconnection what do you mean by open system open system means two systems can communicate regardless of their underlying architecture that means it hardly matters what their architecture is in terms of hardware and software and still they can communicate okay so software means operating system might be different and hardware means like uh, one is pentium 4 another is pentium 3 and so on and still they are communicating and all so translation basically means the same thing that means uh, if sender and receiver are using different operating system even then they can communicate so translation means uh, presentation layer as the name says presentation that means how data will be presented okay so uh, translation means uh, it will uh, convert the message into common format which can be understood by both sender as well as receiver so roughly you can think that uh, it this layer is responsible for converting the message into common format okay that is translation next is encryption encryption is done by presentation layer only encryption is not in gate syllabus so we will not study it next is compression compression is also not in gate syllabus so we will not study it you should remember the names only translation encryption compression that is the responsibility of presentation layer take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay done yes is it clear yes sir okay so uh, next is uh, application layer the last layer is application layer application layer so application layer uh, it it basically provide a interface to the user so that it can interact with the network so interface between interface between user and network that is provided by application layer so what are the functions first function is this only interface between user and network second is <coughs> i provide multiple services like mail services okay directory services you should remember the name no need to dig deep into this directory services then remote login like telnet and all you have heard the word file transfer access and management ftam file transfer access and management ftam that is also done by application layer okay so i think now we have done all the layers so this was layer number 7 application layer take the snapshot done yes sir yes layer number 6 layer number 5 and uh, layer number 4 was the transport layer layer number 3 was network layer layer number 2 was your data link layer and layer number 1 physical which we have already completed in the previous lecture so all the seven layers we have done their functionality i have given you the idea so here our OSI model has been completed. So I have told you, na network model. Network model was what? It will handle all the issues related with data transfer between sender and receiver. So whatever issue you think that will be handled by your network model. There are many network models in computer networks, but we will study only two, which are required for gate. One was OSI, another was TCP/IP model. So OSI model is over now. Now we are going to start TCP/IP model. So next data model is. tcp ip model 
and here i will give you idea that why i was saying to ignore the session layer and presentation layer and all i will give you idea here itself okay so first of all i will give you a small idea that uh, osi model was developed in around 1980s osi model was developed in 1980s 1980s so when it was implemented uh, first it uh, obviously first model is developed and then it is implemented but uh, in which year it was implemented the fact is that it was never implemented never implemented it is just a theoretical concept so it will give you idea what are the tasks and all so it is just a theoretical concept theoretical concept it was never implemented try to remember this fact it was never implemented why it was never implemented let me give you a small idea see there were three main reasons that why tcp ip uh, sorry why osi model failed there were three reasons three reasons so the first reason was bad timing bad timing second was bad implementation and third is bad technology okay there were three main reasons why this model failed bad timing bad implementation bad technology bad timing so what do you mean by bad timing see this so i am making a graph uh, this is activity versus time graph this is activity versus time graph so when computer networks were just developed so at that time uh, there was obviously very less activity okay slowly activity increases and then it decreases and then again increases and then it decreases like this this is the general curve for any technology whatever technology you think this is the general curve like computer networks is a technology the moment it comes so initially there was very less activity with respect to time as the time increases activity increases and what is this activity that is the research work okay so uh, slowly uh, 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 you can say scholars or scientists come to know about the technology they will keep on doing research and all so this is the area where we have uh, research is at the peak and then slowly research will decrease why it will decrease because obviously lot of work has already been done so now no need to do some new works and all almost everything is over almost everything is crystal clear so now at this stage research is at very low level because everything has been completed okay so this is the real time where standardizations are done standardizations okay so the the technology is standardized at this point why at this point because at, at this point almost all the work has been done okay so standardizations like iso organization international organization for standards and all there are many organizations which provide standards so here standardization is done for the technology what do you mean by standardizations like uh, they will give you uh, fixed rules and regulations that like step 1 you have to do this thing step 2 this you have to do this thing and so on they will provide steps and all so they will properly standardize the technology okay and then again activity increases why again activity is increasing because now businessmen will come into the picture and they will try to throw the money into that new technology because they want profit at all and slowly that curve will increase because uh, at, at this point uh, you can say uh, uh, businessmen are uh, investing lots and lots of money into this technology and slowly it will decrease why because profit margin have been decreased for example when uh, when your mobile phone came at that point of time call was of i think uh, 50 to 60 rupees for one call for uh, outgoing also and for incoming also and now it is almost free okay so as the tech new technology come into the market uh, many investors will come they they will invest lot and lot of money and at some point of time it will be at peak and slowly it will decrease because profit margin will decrease because lots and lots of businessmen will come into the picture and competition will come and slowly market will go down that is the basic scenario so this is the best time at which standardization should be done at that time tcp ip model came okay at that time tcp ip model came but here at this point 
OSI model came. So no doubt we are studying first OSI model and then we are studying this TCP IP model. But actually TCP IP model came first and then OSI model come into the picture. So at this point of time OSI model came. So obviously it was bad timing. Why? Because standardization has been done and lots of big businessmen have already invested lots and lots of amount of money on TCP IP model. And businessmen are generally very stiff. So when new technology come, then why they will invest in that? They will say, I have already purchased the things. Why I will I, I will do the things again and again and so on. So it was bad timing. So the basic uh, reason was bad timing. That means it come late into the picture. It should come before, uh, or you can say exact timing should be there. But it comes late into the picture. That was the basic thing. That why this model failed. Because already lots and lots of investments were done. So now nobody tried to shift to this model. Second was bad implementation. See, there are seven layers and this model is very huge there are lots and lots of functionalities of the layer so uh, uh, so if somebody tries even tries to implement that model they eventually left it saying it is very huge we are now frustrated and so on they simply left this model okay so bad implementation means it was very huge second was bad technology bad technology means techniques were not good like uh, transport layer is doing uh, uh, your uh, uh, error control and flow control data link layer is also doing error control and flow control and some layers are very overcrowded like data link layer is doing many functionality session layer is doing only two three functionalities some are overcrowded some are less crowded and so on that was bad technology that's why this model failed okay so it was just a theoretical point which i want to clear that osi model was never implemented because of these three reasons bad timing it was invent it was developed late it should have come at this point of time but it came at this point of time that's why it failed because uh, many investors have already invested their money. Now nobody tries to shift it to this model. If somebody tries to shift it, then they think that this model is very huge and they simply left it. Bad technology means some layers were overcrowded, some layers were less crowded and that were creating problem. Okay, so you can write a few points according to your own wish and since it is a recorded session, you can uh, rewind the video, watch it again and so on. I'm not going into writing these points and all because it will simply waste our time because it is a very simple theoretical concept which you should know. Take the snapshot, I will jump to the next slide. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we will dig deep into this model that is TCP IP model. Are we okay. continuing the class, sir? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, time is up. 8 o'clock. Till 8 o'clock, class was there. Oh, oh, is it, sir? Okay. Oh, so if everybody is comfortable, then we can extend it. Actually, uh, I have not completed many topics in today's class, so I just want to complete uh, at least one or two topics or I should complete this TCP IP model only. If everybody is comfortable, I will complete it. No problem, sir. Okay, so it's best we should complete this topic. Okay, yeah. So now we are going to start TCP IP model. So what this model is saying, TCP IP model is saying uh, we should have only four layers. But on the contrary, what OSI was saying, seven layers. But TCP IP model is saying only four layers. So uh, let me write the OSI model layer, application layer, then presentation, session, transport, network, data link and physical so what OS, uh, what tcp ip model is saying you combine these three layers and you call it as application layer that's why i was keep on saying session presentation is not so important at all because uh, all these three layers are combined into application layer and this model is actually implemented in uh, networking so obviously question will be asked from this model only so by default if they have mentioned nothing you will say okay the question is related to tcp ip model only don't unnecessarily dip, uh, dig deep into osi and all so see this if they are saying uh, who is network dialog controller network dialog controller and they are giving you option as application layer transport layer 
network layer and physical layer so you will see application layer only that means what they are uh, indirectly asking question on tcp ip model if they say session layer as a option if they say session layer as the option then you will take it now you will say okay the question is related to osi model okay so session layer presentation layer they are not in this tcp ip model all these three layers are combined into one layer that is application layer transport layer it's okay transport only network is network only and these two layers are combined and they called it as host to network layer host to network layer okay so yeah they call that as host to network layer this was your tcp ip model so only four layers first layer second layer third layer and fourth layer okay yeah but for our convenience uh, we will study these layers as physical and data link okay so what we are studying in tcp ip model we will say for our convenience we have five layers again and again i'm repeating let me write that in the next slide please take snapshot this is very confusing point and many students get confused here so take snapshot i will jump to the next slide done sir okay so in original tcp ip model which it uh, it was developed original tcp ip model only four layers which i have given you in the previous slide but for our convenience we will study five layers what are the five layers application transport network data link and physical layer number 1 layer number 2 3 4 and 5 so that's why i was saying again and again forget about presentation session and all okay so who is related to syntax and semantics exchange between sender and receiver application layer according to tcp ip model and according to osi model presentation layer is the answer okay so like that you you should be able to remember these points so original tcp ip model only four layers but we are studying five layer architecture that is these five layers so i hope you have got the point so uh, in this model we have multiple protocols so let me give you the idea of these protocols and many times question have been asked on these protocols only take snapshot i will jump to the next slide done sir okay so at application layer what are the protocols so uh, smtp smtp ftp http dns snnp telnet okay pop 3 and so on multiple protocols are there we will study them don't worry so smtp is you please write down i have no uh, i do not have much space simple mail transfer protocol smtp is simple mail transfer protocol they will simply ask which of the following is application layer protocol you will say smtp is the application layer protocol they will give you multiple options okay so the the chart which i am preparing now or the diagram which i am preparing now you will expect definitely one question from this diagram or this chart that is for sure and i can give you in written will definitely come in gate exam directly or indirectly so you should know these points so smtp work at which layer application layer ftp works at which layer application layer so smtp is simple mail transfer protocol and this is in your gate syllabus we will study that properly okay email is email topic is there in your gate syllabus so we will study smtp and all next is ftp file transfer protocol ftp is file transfer protocol this is in your gate syllabus we will study that http hypertext transfer protocol hypertext transfer protocol this is in your gate syllabus we will study it dns domain name system dns is domain name system this is in gate syllabus domain name system 
SNNP, Simple Network Management Protocol. Simple Network Management Protocol. Not in Gates syllabus. You will not study it. Simple Network Management Protocol. Telnet. Terminal Network. Telnet is Terminal Network. Not in Gates syllabus. Terminal network, not in gate slavers. POP 3. Post Office Protocol version 3. Post Office Protocol version 3. This is in gate slavers. We will study it. Post Office Protocol version 3. Many times gate has asked port numbers of these protocols also. So port number means uh, which we will study transport layer. So when we will dig deep into the topic, I will give you idea what is the uh, port number and all. Many times question have been asked. So I'm repeating again and again. Uh, one question you can expect from this directly or indirectly. So on application layer, all these protocols are working. Okay. Next is below application layer, what we are having transport layer. Transport layer. So at transport layer, we will have two protocols in gate syllabus. TCP, transmission control protocol. TCP is transmission control protocol. And UDP, user datagram protocol. User datagram protocol. This is transmission control protocol. UDP is user datagram protocol. Okay. So these two protocols are there in your gate syllabus and we will study them. Don't worry. Both are in syllabus and very, very important. Okay. So whenever TCP is used at transport layer, we will call the packet as segment. Whenever TCP, very, very important points they have been asked in gate many times. So whenever TCP is used at transport layer, we will call the packet as segment. Whenever UDP is used at transport layer, we will call the packet as user datagram. I have told you in the previous lecture also that a transport layer packet name two, two names segment and user datagram. So now I have given you the idea when we call the packet as segment, when we call the packet as user datagram. So they will ask indirect question. They will give you the hint user datagram. You will say, okay, question is related to UDP. They will say the word segment. You will say, okay, question is related to TCP like that. You have to remember these points. Okay. Very, very basic points. So transport layer TCP, a packet name is segment and transport layer UDP packet name is user datagram. Okay. Next is network layer. So below that we have network layer. So in network layer, we have uh, IP, inter-networking protocol. IP is inter-networking protocol. Inter-networking protocol. This is the main protocol which is working at network layer. So we have four supporting protocols of IP. ICMP, IGMP, ARP, RARP. IP is inter-networking protocol. So IP is using four supporting protocol. ICMP Internet Control Message Protocol. ICMP is Internet Control Message Protocol. IGMP is Internet Group Message Protocol. IGMP is Internet Group Message Protocol. ARP is Address Resolution Protocol. Address Resolution Protocol. RARP is reverse address resolution protocol. Reverse address resolution protocol. Okay. Reverse address resolution protocol. Okay. So uh, uh, the last layer is uh, data link layer and physical layer. They were combined. Nah? Data link layer and physical layer, they were combined. And at that layer, we will say no specific protocol. No specific protocol is defined here. Okay. So actually it depends on network to network, which protocol we will use and all. So roughly I will say like this, if you have heard the names like Aloha 
ओके स्लोटेड अलोहा ओके देन सी एस एम ए गो बैक एंड सिलेक्टिव रिपीट and so on there are many protocols i have told you na data link layer if you have covered data link layer 50% networking is over okay so all these protocols don't worry we will study them one by one all these protocols we will study them one by one okay yeah aloha slotted aloha csma go back and select repeat i have written very few we will study lots of them okay yeah so no particular no specific protocol means actually it depends on network to network which protocol we will use depends on network depends on network okay so that's why i have written that no specific protocol so now here i have written protocols because they are uh, irrelevant to the network okay whatever network you have built you have to use ip you have to use icmp igmp arp rrp you have to use tcp udp okay so one of the one of them you have to use so but there is no compulsion here that's why i have written no specific protocol and it depends on the network okay but there are many protocols which which we are going to study okay so these are the four layers according to tcp model and these are the protocols which i have written so one of them definitely one of them will be asked in gate like this okay so they will ask so don't worry you can take the snap of this and i will jump to the next slide and i will give you idea of these protocols one by one i will i will not dig deep into these because we will study them in application layer don't worry about them but i will give you small idea of all these protocols so total 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 7 seven protocols i will give you small idea okay and then we will wind up the class so just bear with me for around half hour maximum half hour and uh, we will complete these seven protocols so that your tcp ip model is at least completed and in the next lecture we will start our proper discussion layer by layer so we will study first physical layer then data link layer then network layer then transport and then application total five layers after five layers your entire computer network subject will be completed okay so so just bear with me for half hour so i will complete this seven protocols i will give you short idea of these protocols what exactly are these and these are very very important points which i am going to tell you now many times they have been asked in gate as it is these points okay so we will cover them and then we will wind up the class is it okay with everybody yes sir okay so let's quickly study them so first protocol at network layer that is ip forget about these we will study them properly aloha slotted aloha and all because it depends on network na so i will just give you idea of these seven protocols yeah so first is ip or internet working protocol so what are the uh, basic points which you should remember uh, ip is unreliable and connectionless protocol first point is unreliable and connectionless protocol unreliable and connectionless protocol unreliable means there is no, no error detection or correction no error detection or correction directly they will ask yeah, ip is reliable or unreliable ip is connection oriented or connectionless like this they will ask direct points okay so no error detection or correction no error detection or correction that's why we are calling it as unreliable connectionless means i think you have got it uh, there is no no connection is established before transmitting data no connection before transmitting data directly you will transfer no connection before transmitting data you will simply transmit it before transmitting data or rather i should say uh, at ip network layer name of the packet was datagram so i will say datagram before transmitting datagram okay let me write that in the previous slide also so at network layer packet is known as datagram at data link layer packet is known as frame you should know this terminology very uh, properly okay yeah so no connection before transmitting the datagram okay so since there is uh, it is unreliable and connectionless protocol so we will call uh, and there is no error checking there is no error tracking also okay no error detection correction no error tracking tracking means uh, from where packet has come and so on so there is no error tracking also no error tracking 
tracking means from which root packet has come and all it cannot uh, remember all these things forget about that now when this is advanced thing when error detection correction is not there so how you will track the error from where uh, packet has come and all you cannot detect, detect that okay so no error detection correction no error tracking there is no connection establishment and also from these points which you can remember is it is a best effort delivery system it is best effort delivery system that means what its entire concentration is to transfer the datagram from sender to receiver and it really don't uh, care about error and all okay so that's why i'm calling it as best effort delivery system that means its entire effort is on delivery so i hope you have got the point so you can take the snapshot okay so that means directly indirectly this means that datagrams can be duplicated they can be they can uh, uh, receive at receiver out of order anything can be done okay so datagrams can be duplicated datagrams can be duplicated okay they can be received out of order anything can be done it hardly matters okay yeah so these are the two important points for uh, mm -hmm. you can say uh, ip so take snapshot i will jump to the next slide excuse me sir yeah so can you explain the second point again best effort delivery system ha huh. Ah, so it means that uh, IP is unreliable and connectionless now. So uh, that means there is no error detection, correction, no error tracking. It is connectionless. So it is doing nothing. Its entire focus is on delivering the datagram from sender to receiver. That's why we are calling it as best effort delivery system. So entire focus is on delivery of the packet. That's why we are calling it as best effort delivery system. Okay. okay sir yeah and uh, and uh, connection less and so on so i can say like this say we have a sender okay and we have some uh, you can say set of routers don't worry we will study them in detail but i am just giving you idea okay so like this they are connected and here we have a receiver so one datagram can go from here to here another datagram can go from here to here to here to here another datagram uh, say can go from here to here then from here here and here and so on whatever path they its entire focus is on delivering the packet that's it it hardly matters from which route a packet is going and so on it hardly matters okay that is the basic meaning of ip so take snapshot i will jump to the next slide Done. Yes, please let me know. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So uh, next is four supporting protocols of IP. Four supporting protocols of IP. what are the four supporting protocols first was arp address resolution protocol what it is doing see this uh, this is sender and uh, router router and this is a receiver so now sender knows ip address of this router but it might not know the physical address of this router now since sender does not know the physical address of this router so how it can send the frame to this router are you getting it r1 na so sender s knows la of r1 how it knows don't worry we will uh, we will come back to it when we will study network layer and all roughly you can think that sender also has a routing table from that routing table it know the ip address of the r1 so sender knows la of r1 but it does not know but it does not know pa of r1 so now what it can do so because if it does not know physical address of r1 then how it can send frame to r1 because ultimately what a datagram cannot fly and go from sender to receiver directly so first the sender will send datagram to this uh, this router but datagram cannot be sent directly datagram will be packed in frame na datagram datagram will be packed in frame header and trailer will be attached and you will call it as a frame 
this frame will be sent from the sender to this router na so frame header will contain physical address of sender and receiver receiver is what this router r1 so uh, so if sender does not know physical address of this router then how packet will be transported or how frame will be sent from this to this so for that arp is used okay so s no la of ra but uh, r1 but does not know pa of r1 so la to pa mapping la to pa mapping is done by arp how it is done and all we will study that when we will study arp okay la to pa mapping is done by arp so please use the uh, word carefully mapping okay when i used to teach in offline classes many student write conversion if we are not converting la to pa conversion means logical address is converted to physical address how it will be converted we can we have no mechanism to convert them we will simply map them are you getting it so mapping will be done there is, there is a big difference between mapping and conversion mapping means simply like this so a function mapping na one is map to two two is map to three like this are you getting it answer yes sir okay 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 so arp is used for la to pa mapping just just you need to remember this thing so this has been asked in gate that's why i'm telling you arp is used for la to pa mapping that's it one word you should remember okay next is rarp let me uh, okay take snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay done okay okay next is rarp reverse address resolution protocol reverse means opposite work so la to pa la to pa it is done by arp so obviously reverse process pa to la pa to la it is done by rarp okay so uh, uh, this question has been asking it many times whenever this class machine is booted this class machine is booted it knows its physical address but does not know ip address but does not know la what protocol used what protocol used shortly i am writing okay what protocol used you will say rarp i will come back to it later why this less machine is used and so on uh, i will come back to it later so the basic thing is it knows physical address but it does not know la so for that it will use rarp so one one word you should remember for rarp reverse procedure na pa to la mapping rarp la to pa mapping arp that's it okay when we will dig deep into the topic i will give you idea why why we need it and so on Next snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Then sir. Okay. That is ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol. I have told you, na, that IP is unreliable. IP is unreliable. That means no error detection, correction, and so on. No error detection or error correction and all. So now question arises. if sender has sent this uh, datagram to this router and then to this router and then the receiver so sender has sent datagram to this router router discard it why router has discarded there can be multiple reasons okay so we will come back to it later when why this router has discarded for example roughly you can think that its queue has been full each router has a queue associated with it so if its queue is full then obviously it has to discard na like a queue is just like a bucket so you have filled water into the bucket so when this bucket is filled then obviously water will spill down that is the scenario here so its router has a buffer so if it's that buffer is full then obviously uh, router cannot store the packet it has to discard the packet so the moment it has discarded the packet what is the responsibility of this router it has to inform the sender that your packet has been discarded please send it again so who will do that it will be done by icmp so icmp so whenever you should remember this golden rule what is the golden rule whenever a packet or datagram is discarded whenever datagram discarded forget about the reason whatever may be the reason there are multiple reasons and that's why i will uh, when i will dig deep into the topic i will give you the reasons why a packet has been discarded and what is the particular message which has which will be sent and so on 
I will give you the idea about each and everything when we will dig deep into this. So the basic thing is that whenever datagram is discarded, ICMP error message will be sent to the sender. Whenever datagram is uh, is discarded, ICMP error message, ICMP error message will be sent to sender. Will be sent to sender. I hope you have got the point. Okay, so please try to remember this fact. ICMP is not error detection or correction protocol. It is simply error reporting protocol. It is simply reporting the error. It is not doing error detection or correction. It is simply reporting that see your packet has been discarded. Please send it again. Or your datagram has been discarded. Please send it again. It is not. It is ne neither detecting error. It is neither correcting error. IP is unreliable. IP has nothing to do when, when packet discarded or so on. It has nothing to do. It it will simply say, I will simply uh, my effort is on delivering the packet. That means my uh, uh, actually I am best effort delivery system. So my effort is on delivery. That's it. So if packet is discarded, I am not responsible because there is no error detection or correction mechanism. So who will take charge of all these things? It's helping protocol or its assistant called ICMP. It will take charge of all the things. So it will clearly say, it will simply say, whenever packet will be discarded, now I will send an error message to the sender reporting that uh, your message has been discarded or your datagram has been discarded for such and such reason. So for each and every reason, there will be a message. Okay. Or there will be a, some error report and so on. We will study that. Don't worry. So I think you have got it now. So ICMP is error reporting protocol. Any doubt here? No, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Take snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. No, sir. Okay. Next. Fourth is IGMP. IGMP is Internet Group Message Protocol. Internet Group Message Protocol. So it is used for multicasting. Multicasting is not in gates label, so we will leave it. So actually, IP they they can ask this question. IP is unicast. Unicast means like this. This is a network, so there are some computers. So you want to send data to this computer only. That is unicasting, one to one. Or you want to send this data to some other computer, one to one. Unicasting means one to one. Now, if you want to send data to all, that is broadcast. Broadcast means like this is a computer and you want to send data to all that is broadcast like radio. It is broadcasted. No? Uh, so uh, radio persons cannot stop somebody to listen their voice at all. You you simply uh, see uh, Red FM 93.5 and all. So the moment you you tune your radio system to 93.5, you will listen the Red FM. Okay, that is the basic scenario. No, nobody can stop you from doing that. That is broadcasting. One to all broadcast means one to all multicasting means selective like in a network we have say a few nodes and you want to send message to this node this node and this node only these three that is multicasting multicasting is selective broadcasting means all unicasting means one to one so for multicasting IGMP is used and it is not in syllabus so we will simply leave it Okay. Yeah. So take snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. So now we are left with only two protocols. Uh, so network layer is over. So only two protocols we are left with. Uh, that is your uh, TCP and UDP. Take snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Okay. Yeah. So let's start TCP now. TCP is transmission control protocol. So first point which you should remember is it is reliable and connection oriented. Reliable and connection oriented. What was IP? IP was unreliable and connectionless protocol. But TCP is reliable and connection oriented protocol. Okay. Second important point. Packets. Packets of TCP are known as segments. Okay, so uh, uh, third important point uh, 
since it is a connection oriented so you might think that uh, see transport layer segment will be packed in datagram na transport layer will give segment now this segment will be given to the network layer what network layer will do to this segment it will attach header network and resulting thing will known as datagram okay and now this datagram will be uh, packed uh, header and trailer will be attached and you will call it as frame so segment will be packed in datagram datagram will be packed in frame and it will be carried in the internet in frame only so now you may argue sir at network very important point is coming please try to listen so you may argue with me sir segments are carried in internet in the datagram and datagram uh, is uh, you can say transported by ip ip is connection less so how tcp is connection oriented isn't it contradictory thing are you getting it so segments are carried in internet in datagrams and datagrams are transported by your ip ip is connection less so how tcp is connection oriented so i want to say this thing i have told you in the previous slide uh, see this so uh, so the datagram were going from uh, one path to other path and so on so different different paths they were going so if you are saying that uh, uh, tcp is connection oriented so that means what connection is established and then data is transferred so how connection will be established and all okay so how you will think that it is carried on internet in the same path and all so try to remember i have told you previously also connection actually it is not physical connection it is a logical connection okay so connection is logical connection is logical and not physical logical means mind make up and all i have told you in the previous slides only when i was discussing your osi model are you able to remember it see this i have told you know connection control connection oriented connection less so connection oriented means allocation of resources in advance that is mind make up or memory and buffer and so on that they are allocated connection is not physical rather it is logical connection okay so this is the basic meaning of connection oriented so please do not say connection oriented means it is a physical connection physical connection means all the segments will will be will transport from the same path no segments cannot be transferred from the same path because they are ultimately carried in the internet in the datagram and datagram will carry uh, datagram will go from different different path okay so connection is logical and it is not physical anyway if you are not able to understand these points don't worry when i will start tcp you will get more clarity okay yeah so this is all about tcp and and one more important point yeah um, it is byte oriented this has been asking it many times tcp is byte oriented or bit oriented you will simply say it is byte oriented protocol byte oriented protocol byte oriented means each byte is numbered each byte is numbered each byte is numbered like byte number 1 byte number 2 byte number 3 and so on like this you will say each byte is numbered is it okay yeah and and uh, 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 since it is connection oriented so fifth point is coming now fifth point will be that uh, we can send large messages with the help of tcp large messages can be sent by tcp that is it can do chopping can do chopping like this in the previous slides only i have told you all the things connection oriented means last message can be sent by tcp and it can, that is it can do chopping and all okay yeah take snapshot i will jump to the next slide and i will just give you a hint of udp and then we will end up the class done so okay next is udp udp is user datagram protocol Which so completely a... different yeah can you show the slide again once okay okay yeah
Done? Yes, sir. Okay. Next is UDP. UDP is User Datagram Protocol. Completely opposite of TCP. TCP was reliable and connection oriented. So it will be what? Unreliable and connectionless. When its packets were known as segments, so here packets are called user datagram. That's why we are calling it as user datagram protocol. So please try to follow the terminology. Datagram. Datagram means network layer. User datagram. User datagram means transport layer. Okay. Do not get confused here. Third, third important point. Connection. Uh, uh, connection is logical and not physical. So it, it is connectionless. So don't worry about the third point. Next, byte oriented protocol. Same. Uh, sorry, we, we will not say it as byte oriented protocol, we will call it as message oriented protocol. Message oriented protocol. What do you mean message oriented protocol? UDP will send only that amount of data which can be kept in its user datagram. It cannot do chopping and all. That's why we are calling it as message oriented. That means entire message will be fit into one user datagram. Okay, so no chopping. No chopping. That is, it can send only that amount of data which can fit in user data graph. Okay, so that's why we are calling it as message oriented protocol. No chopping, that means it can send only that amount of data which can fit in user data gram. Okay, yeah, connectionless means no resources are allocated in advance. No resources are allocated in advance. And their connection oriented connection oriented means resources are allocated in advance. That is mind makeup and all. I have told you in the previous lectures only. Sorry, previous slides only. Okay, so here we have used connection oriented. That means resources allocated in advance, like buffer and all. I have given you a very good example of call and WhatsApp. Resources allocated in advance. So here no resources are allocated. So you you can say WhatsApp anybody. And you forget about uh, you forget about uh, reply and all. So you have not allocated some resources, or your mind is not make up that you will immediately get reply and all. That is the basic thing. So connectionless means no resources are allocated in advance. Okay. So what what is the use? So whenever we want to transfer very small amount of data, whenever we want to transfer very small amount of data, UDP is the best. So whenever small amount of data you want to transfer, whenever we want to transfer small amount of data, UDP is best. Like you are, I have given you example of playing game, video game. Like you have pressed right arrow key, car should move to the right. You press left arrow key, car should move to the left. So what you are sending exactly only one arrow key, only very small amount of data. So UDP is the best. So whenever we want to transfer small amount of data, UDP is best. For big data or for large amount of data, uh, TCP is best. Large amount of data, TCP is best. These are very, very basic point which you should remember. These are just like ABCD. So if you try to learn English, you should know ABCD. If you do not know ABCD, how you will learn English? If you know ABCD, then you can make words and after making words, you can make sentences and all. So the basic thing is ABCD. So for networking, I am just giving you ABCD. Okay, and then layer by layer, we will study the things. Yes, so I think you have got it. So now uh, by common sense, what do you think? Uh, for real time data like audio video, which is best, UDP or TCP? Sir, UDP over. Yeah, very good. UDP is the best. Because UDP speed is very, very high. Na? It is not establishing connection, it is simply transferring the data and all. So for multimedia messages, UDP is the best. 
this question has been asked in gate but uh, multi media messages data, udp data will be large enough no sir data will the uh, comparatively data is larger no sir yeah data is larger no problem but uh, 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 but it has been divided already now so see uh, actually it depends on application layer so application layer will give messages in a very small part so that udp can transfer them hmm. so if if application layer protocol itself is capable of handling the things udp is the best if application layer is simply sending large amount of data to the transport layer then you have to use tcp okay. Okay, so it entirely depends on application layer protocol. So now, if application layer protocol itself is handling the things like it can do error detection correction, then no need of doing TCP. You you send the data by UDP. So it's just like that. See this. This is the application layer protocol. So now, if this is intelligent person and it is saying that okay, I will send only that amount of data which can be handled by transport layer very very easily. If application layer protocol is intelligent. no no problem you can use udp but if application layer protocol is not that intelligent and it is simply saying okay i have to send a huge amount of data i will simply send that chunk to the uh, uh, transport layer then there is no way out you have to use the tcp okay so like uh, you can consider like sensible person if some person is very sensible he will speak very few words and very small words and very carefully he will use udp is the best if person is not sensible he will keep on speaking uh, just like that and all uh, very bad words and all so tcp is the best to handle those things like this you can remember okay is it okay ha okay. ha yeah so for real time data or multimedia messages udp is the best okay so that's it so uh, we have completed the basic networking part so in the next lecture we will start the physical layer physical layer is that much important so we study only active portions of the act is very very big okay so collectively physical layer and data link layer these two layers collectively is known as data communication subject this is entirely different subject and it is more or less related to your electronics and communication engineering it is not related to your computer science we will study signals and their encodings and so on so physical and data link layer together known as data communication and it is not required for gate uh, but uh, rather more physical part it is not required for gate how signals are encoded and all but we will i will just give you small idea small hint so that uh, you get a flavor of what exactly the how the things are transferred and all okay and then we will study our main layer that is the data link layer okay yeah so now our approach will be layer by layer physical layer then data link layer then network then transport and then finally application okay so if you have any doubt you can ask me otherwise i will wind up the class here itself and in the next lecture we will start uh, physical layer yes any doubt so sir in class tomorrow we did not get any updates yeah we, we will have a class i think at 10 am in the morning i will be having networking class morning 10 am tomorrow ha uh, sir ha sir Okay, okay, and in the night also, I am having a class with you, discrete mathematics, from eight to ten thirty. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Not in the. You you. One one. Okay, so you. Uh, I think uh, sir will tell you about the these things uh, today or tomorrow. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay then. Thank you so sir. much. Bye bye. Yeah. Sir, uh, yesterday's class recording is not available for computer networks. Okay, let me check that out. It should be available, I think. So I think it it is private or something like that. Let me check that out. Sir, अभी तक सिर्फ दो ही लेक्चर हुए हैं ना सर? नहीं, अब ये ये सेकंड लेक्चर था. No, it is it is public. Please see, you will get it. Okay. Sir. Yeah, computer networks is available. This is the second lecture. Hmm. 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 Okay. So tomorrow, 10 a.m. I will start the class for uh, computer networks. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, and if any change or any updates, sir will provide you. Okay. Okay, okay then. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you, sir.